Hello, this is Mike from DangerInPlay.com, and this is part two of my Bloodwork series. In part one, we talked about testosterone levels, luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone. So today, we're going to look at the rest of my results from my male anti aging panel test. This test was part of the, I think they call it the male athletic anti aging package. It's a little bit pricier, but when you get into my age, which is approaching 40, you need to stay on top of your health and you need to monitor this stuff and you need to establish some baselines of what healthy or unhealthy isn't. I have lab work going back for years. This is my latest result, so I, I'm going to read this in light of my past and also in light of some scientific sources. So let's just skip all the the um, red blood cell, white blood, blood cell count stuff. We talked about that in a, in a previous video. Let's go straight to uh, fasting glucose. Fasting glucose means how well your body, how well does your body process carbohydrates? Are you at risk of diabetes, etc., etc. My fasting glucose is 83, which, as you can see, is within the range of 65 to 99. What that means is I'm not at risk for diabetes. I have good insulin function. Uh, my body handles carbohydrates well. It means that um, I'm healthy. And generally, people who have a good body composition are going to have lower fasting glucose because I don't have too much fat and I have a good amount of muscle that number is going to be low and by the way my number's always been around 80 to 85 over the past five to seven years now let's look at this high BUN what in the world is BUN is this high and should I be concerned and what about this BUN creatinine ratio that is high too Oh my gosh, should I be concerned? It says that it's high. High just means it's outside of the range. And what that means is it's something you need to flag for yourself and it's something that your doctor needs to flag. So what are we going to do? Well, let's go to WebMD. Let's go to Mayo and let's, let's look at this stuff. Um, you can see right here what it is. It's blood, urea, and nitrogen. And that's how much urea, which is a protein waste byproduct, is in your bloodstream. And you can tend to have high number numbers if you're severely dehydrated. Or, here's how you prepare for the test. Do not eat a lot of meat or other protein in the 24 hours we're having a bun test. Well, as you can imagine, I eat a lot of protein up to 8 hours before my test. It's probably why it's elevated. But it's not elevated enough to cause you any kind of concern. And if you click here, same thing. It's the same page, actually. <laughs> that was really funny. So there you go. Not a big deal, not a big concern. And again, it's just a little bit outside of the reference range. Something to flag. Um, I have, again, data going back for a long time. I've always been around 26. And that's because, I, you know, I train hard, man. I train hard, eat a lot of protein. I, my body's always pumping out waste products. That's the way it goes. But it, it's definitely not unhealthy or anything that I would need to worry about. We're going to scroll down a little bit. Oh my gosh, it's high. AST and ALT are high. Holy cow. Uh, Mike is unhealthy. It must be steroids are killing him. No. That's where a little bit of knowledge goes um, wrong, goes awry. My numbers are high for a scientific reason. Let's click on some science. Here you go. Muscular exercise can cause highly pathological liver function tests in healthy men. Jeez Louise, this is right on fucking PubMed. You can figure all this stuff out for yourself. So all the little nerds who say, oh, you know, liver values are high. Yeah, you don't really know what you're talking about. What'd they do? They had guys, and you, go, you can go to the study yourself, and I'll link to it at dangerplay.com. They, they had guys lift weights, and then they went in and they got uh, blood tested. And five out of eight guys had elevated uh, liver functions. There you go. My liver functions are always in that range. And again, I know that because I have blood work going back years. Now, if my blood range had been, my liver ranges have been, say, like 10, and then suddenly they're 56, okay, maybe I'm a little bit worried. But this is totally normal for men who train with intensity and train with weights. Nothing to worry about, but we're about to come up to something interesting. First, we'll go to cholesterol. Cholesterol, total 160, triglycerides 73, HDL 63, VLDL 15, LDL 82. What does this stuff mean? Again, let's just click over to the Mayo Clinic and we'll look up cholesterol levels. Here you go. I'll link to the page. Below 200, desirable. I'm below 200. Below 100, near ideal. Isn't that amazing? HDL, over 60, best. Where, where was I at? 
Where was I at? HDL, 63. There you go. We're doing something right, obviously. And this is all, again, <laughs> again, Mayo Clinic. Triglycerides below 150 is desirable. Where are my triglycerides at? 73. Not too shabby, huh? So, again, I know that most of these people, you guys watching it, are just kind of laughing along because you're, you're not actually the haters, but... You see all these people, they say, oh, they, they try to discredit the work I do at Danger and Play, and they, tr they try to <laughs> discredit me. Okay, haters, let's see your blood work now. Do you actually have better fucking cholesterol than I have? Um, do you have better glucose than I have? Do you have better uh, fasting insulin, which we'll get to? I don't know. I highly doubt it. But if you're going to talk shit, let's see your blood work. We'll compare, and then you can tell me how much you know. Now, guess what, though? We do have an actual problem, and this is why you guys have to be on top of your health you have to be on top of your health, especially as you approach 40. My iron and TIBC are all out of whack. Okay, the iron's high, my iron saturation's high, my UABC is low. What does this mean? Oh my god, steroids? No, it doesn't have anything to do with steroids. Again, science. I don't even <laughs> I don't even know how to pronounce this because I'm just learning about it. Hemochromatosis. Hemo would be, I guess, blood. Chromatosis, I imagine, would be it's a little bit too high or producing too much. If, if I had to do the etymology of it, that'd be my guess. And what happens? It's a faulty gene defect. happens to white people. And it um, develops people in midlife. There you go. Uh, I'm going to get this checked out. I'm going to find out what's going on. It's actually not a big deal based on the research that I've done. I just need to start giving blood more. No more red meat. I also might have an unusual lab value because I drink a lot of beet juice. Beet juice is rich in iron, and if I have this gene defect, then naturally I'm going to um, hold more of that iron. Also, if you take a lot of vitamin C, which I get from a lot of the juices I do, and I'd, I'd also had the flu really bad before I did this blood test, so I'd been taking a bunch of emergency. So my body had been absorbing iron more. And so it could be a blip. It, it might not be a blip. But, hey, man, when... I see something like this, I'm happy because I got the same lab set of lab tests on the male athletic anti-aging panel done a year and a half ago and my iron was fine. This tells me I might be developing um, hereditary um, iron problem or maybe not. Maybe it's just I was drinking too much beet juice. But again, guys, you got to take care of your health. I don't know where it became like alpha or cool in our culture for men to just assume that they're healthy and to never go into the doctor. This is this is absolutely and totally complete madness. You need to either go to a doctor regularly or you need to do what I do, which is I, I'm my own doctor. I get all my own lab work done. I, I know how to read the science. And then I go talk to an actual clinician and I'll say, here's my blood work. You know, I'm going to pay you. You know, I'll, I'll say, let me give you 500 bucks. I'm going to do a consult with you. Here's my lab work. What do you think? Incidentally, um, the people that I work with, uh, Private MD Labs, can have you do just iron tests, and it's like 55 bucks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give blood, I'm going to stop eating red meat, reduce my vitamin C intake, no more beet juice, and then I'll get a follow-up test. And if it shows like it's bad, then that means I may need to go in for transfusions or do something else. Again, no big deal. We already talked about testosterone, that's old news. Uh, TSH is thyroid-stimulating hormone, 1.62, so... I'm not high, I'm not low, I'm just sort of blah, but we're good. Uh, T4, 1.47, I'm near the high end of the range. T4 is, signals your body to produce thyroid, it's a thyroid hormone. DHEA is at 304. DHEA is a natural male hormone that does decline with age. 304 is actually a really good value for someone my age. The range is 102 to 416. As you approach 40, the thing goes tanks. And you can look at the correlation between low DHE levels and longevity, low DHE levels and health and fitness. Uh, low DHEA is, is no good. And my uh, DHEA is good. Luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone. We talked about prolactin. Um, that's a hormone that causes women actually to um, produce breast milk. I'm within range. Prostate specific uh, value measures your likelihood of developing prostate cancer actually so where am I 0.8 is the range see bottom of the range people say does TRT cause prostate cancer TRT can give you heart attack well do your blood work can't tell you look at my prostate absolutely great uh, this TRT gonna give you a heart attack I read some article in the New York Times about TRT and heart attacks 
Well, that, that's why it's C-reactive protein. That's the measure of cardiovascular event. 0.8, way at the lower end of the range, which is 0 to 3. My C-reactive protein is great. My cholesterol is great. My lipids are great. My fasting glucose is great. My fasting insulin is great. Uh, my liver counts in bun ratios are a little bit high because again that's natural because anybody who trains hard with weights is going to have those issues and generally speaking not medical advice unless your values are 2x higher than they should be then doctors usually aren't concerned again this is just something that you flag for analysis uh, estradiol is at 6 which is actually too low and I don't know why my estradiol is so low I, I would want it to be a little bit higher because when your estradiol is that low you get joint aches. It can impact your sex drive. Um, like I said in my first podcast, I'm not in any kind of anti-estrogen. I'm not on Clomoid or Novel Dax or, or any CIRMs, no AIs. I don't know why it is so low. But it is, it is a little, actually a little too low. I, I wish, <laughs> wish I had a little bit more estrogen in my bloodstream because estrogen is actually good for you. Uh, magnesium. I tend to be deficient. I have a gene deficiency that causes my body to lose magnesium, so I have to take a lot of magnesium. I take over a gram of magnesium a day. If I don't, I develop restless leg syndrome. Now, I know a lot of you, like me, are skeptical and think restless leg syndrome is a made-up um, disease. For me, it's absolutely not. Uh, when I don't take enough magnesium, I feel like I have peanut butter flowing through my veins, and it hits me right at night, and I just want to like kick out or do like the flutter kicks or something to try to make it feel like blood is circulating. I take way more magnesium, and I take Epsom salt baths. I used to use this stuff called magnesium oil. Um, there's these magnesium bath flakes I now use, and even then, I'm not even at, not even above range. All that magnesium I use. Insulin again, insulin you want low insulin is good. Low insulin means that when you eat carbohydrates, most of the carbohydrates are not going to be stored as fat. Um, SHBG um, has to do with fertility. As you can see, I'm good, 37.4, right within the range. So there you go. That's my blood work. Pretty straightforward, right? As you can see, I'm in excellent health, except for a potential genetic defect that I might have. And again, that's why you have to be on top of your health. If you read about uh, gene therapy, it's an amazing stuff, and I don't want to digress too much. We'll talk about this later. Uh, maybe I'll do a separate post on it. I'm actually going to go get my whole genotype mapped. Now, I got my 23andMe profile done like five years ago, which was cool and helpful. But with the genotype, they look at everything, and they look for all these gene defects that you might have. And a gene defect is going to tell you what problems you might have health-wise down the road. Also, how your body is going to respond to drugs. You can even get a lot of information like that off of 23andMe. For example, 23andMe said that I would have more than likely have curly hair. I'd never actually grown my hair out, so I thought, oh, well, whatever. I don't have curly hair. You know, I'm freaking Eastern European descent primarily. And sure enough, my hair has grown out, and I have curly hair, and I actually look kind of Jewish. Uh, anyway, get your get your stuff checked out. You know, I, again, I might have um, a genetic defect with iron that surfaces as a man hits 40. I would never would have known that if you don't know about it for years. Um, you can, it can cause liver damage. It can cause all kinds of internal organ damage. And again, this isn't my fault. It's nothing I did. It's just genetics. You know, I've been blessed with a f good height, broad shoulders, piercing blue eyes. But my voice is a little bit higher pitched than perhaps I would like. And um, I've fucked up, <laughs> fucked up Iron Man. So that's life. You're, you're dealt a genetic hand, and you need to learn what hand you're dealt before you actually have a problem. Anyhow, if you have any questions, post them in the comments. This is Mike from DangerInPlay.com.